Hi, everybody. My name is Banana. I'm an engineer at the Solana Foundation focusing on NFTs, creators, and social. And I'm super stoked for this panel on Web3 music. We have some leaders in the space next to me here. It's an amazing, amazing panel of chads that I'm super excited to talk to you guys today about. Um, we're going to start. I'm going to allow our panelists to introduce themselves. Uh, panelists, if you wouldn't mind saying your name, where you're from, and one interesting music fact about yourself for the audience. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, my name is Matthew Zamora. I'm co-founder and CEO of Boombox Labs. Uh, and an interesting music fact about myself, I got into music through DJing, and I used to DJ house parties on an iPhone because I didn't have access to the full equipment. So I was just in the corner of the parties, just always mixing on a little iPhone app. So that's kind of how I got my start in production and then later kind of led to, to where I am now. So you yeah, you journey. go to the club with like two iPhones. Imagine, dude, a big and like iPad. the little DJs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. That's for awesome. Sure. Thanks, Ben. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Josh Savage. I'm a British indie pop singer songwriter, visionary artist, a globe performer, and now digital pioneer. And uh, based in Berlin now, actually. I'm, I moved there. Uh, I tried it for three months. Now it's been six years. And uh, my interesting fact is. I have toured the world one living room at a time, and I've played over 700 shows on four continents. 700 shows. Chad, yeah. amazing. Amazing. Awesome. amazing. And last but not least. Hey, I'm Ro Neal. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of a project called Audius. We're a uh, music marketplace that's owned, operated, controlled by uh, the artists and fans that make it special. And, uh, yeah, my fun music fact is in a, a past life, I was a metal drummer. So if anyone uh, is into that, um, come, come hang, come chat. Oh, man. So what we're going to have is we're going to have the ad hoc show. Right after this, we're going to have the drums, yeah. the guitar, and the DJ crushing it for you guys. Please stay tuned after our wonderful panel. They don't know what's happening. We're going to make it happen. Cool club. <laughs> cool club. Yeah. And um, what, what, what's really exciting about this panel for me is that we have like the entire breadth of Web3 music here. We have distribution, we have marketplace, we have individual creator. So I think we're gonna get into some really, really deep, deep, deep chats today about this industry, and I'm super excited about it. Um, I wanna start off this panel with, with something that I think is important. We've been doing Web3 music and Web3 creator stuff for about three years now on chain, at least that I'm aware of. It's probably longer for many others. Um, what do you guys think about this industry? So what I want to ask you guys first is, what's one thing that we've been doing well in Web3, right? What, what's the differentiator here that we're succeeding on? What's something that we've completely just fallen flat on our face with, right? Where Web3 may not be the right technology. And, you know, in the middle ground, what's something that, that we could possibly be doing better for our industry moving forward? Yeah, I, I think what we've been doing really well is building tools for artists. Um, I know that that's sort of what put us onto the idea of Boombox initially, was just seeing all the amazing support for artists in the ecosystem. Uh, and a lot of the tooling and stuff is really beneficial for artists. So for artists to be able to use the tools and move forward you know, from that point, I think has been, been really great. There's a ton of options for them. Um, so on the inverse of that, I think that there can be a lot more done for the consumer experience. And I think that there's a lot of different ways that we could see music move. Um, you know, there's so many different avenues of music from you know, samples and instrumentals to you know, things like the licensing and stuff. And we're still just at the forefront of it. Um, or sorry, just we're going to see it unfold over the years. But I think that just seeing it expand from the artist side into whether it's sort of a utility side from you know samples or, or instrumentals. Um, yeah, there's a ton of new ways that I think that we can see it grow. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I would agree. I agree wholeheartedly, right? Tooling is the thing that we've kind of started to figure out. A lot of creators and artists just aren't engineers and they're just not able to take advantage of the, of the ecosystem that we're in. They're not engineers, they need these tools, right? And Agree, distribution needs a little bit of work. We need more showcases. I fully, fully agree. And the user experience could be better. But I'm pretty sure that's something that, uh, you know, the builders in the audience and the builders watching this stream are going to be working on, right? And, and improving on as we, as we fix our UX. Josh, what are your thoughts on the space? I would say one of the biggest strengths of music NFTs is that it allows a meaningful connection between artist and fan, something that's really 
uh, crap about Spotify right now. Let's not even talk about, about the financial part of it. But the fact is, like, there's no connection between me and the artist. In the pandemic, I still released music on Spotify, but it was incredibly lonely because I was like, are people just, are people really listening? It's just stats on a screen, which means shit to me. And um, now I have really an incredible community who collect my work and that I give back to them, for example, um, by giving them backstage access to some of my shows and things like that. And there's no way you can do that via Web2 model right now. I guess one of the weaknesses right now is just the learning curve of what an NFT is, how you even buy one. And that's what we can work on. We need to work on making it more palatable. And that's why um, I, I focus more on why you would uh, invest in a music NFT instead of what an NFT is. Yeah, I, I would agree with that 100%. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, the ability to connect with your fans on a deeper level, the ability to remove those middlemen between you and your super fans is something that I think is, is the superpower of Web3. And please, can we stop talking about NFTs? <laughs> right? Can we stop saying NFT in the corner of our applications? Most end users, they don't, they don't care. They want to enjoy the, uh, the user experience. They want to enjoy the applications, right? Um, and I'm sure, Ronil, you have a lot of uh, interesting thoughts on how Web3 can help artists connect with their, with their users, right, based on, on what you guys are building and what you guys are working on. So same question to you. Yeah, so uh, uh, honestly, I guess you're probably going to get a lot of agreement from uh, uh, this panel, but agree wholeheartedly. I, I think what Web3 Music's doing really well right now is uh, uh, creating and fostering a level of directness in that artist-fan relationship that's never been possible before, right? Um, as a uh, creator using these tools and this new tool chain, you know who these fans are, you have the ability to reach them, and you also have sovereignty around your data. You can take that and use it across different experiences and in different places. And uh, I think that's something we're doing really well um, as, a, as a community, as a space, is holding everyone to that standard and that level. And uh, uh, I'm always really you know, heartened to see folks who are building, you know, closed source only experiences in Web3 or like trying to uh, silo that data away, but sort of like serve the, the um, uh, Web3 music community uh, uh, through these sort of affinity marketing <laughs> kind of mechanisms, for lack of a better word, um, they get called out as they should, because it's like, what's the point? What's the point of all of this if you're going to build a traditionally structured like ivory tower siloed experience that hoards this data um, and then you know pretend that you're doing something different to uh, to get adoption so I think we're doing that really well and most importantly we're uh, as a community you know holding people accountable in that area um, I think the thing we're doing most poorly right now uh, again echoing what what's been said um, but in a slightly different twist. I, I don't know if it's education so much as uh, uh, usability in that I think it's our job as the folks building these things to make it so that you don't, you don't, you shouldn't have to learn all this new stuff to be able to get value out of these tools. Um, that it's the tools jobs to meet uh, the users where they are and uh, help bring them into this, but to do so in a way that doesn't uh, compromise on those ideals, the data sovereignty and, and other things that I mentioned. So, yeah. I, I, love, I love the phrasing, meeting the users where they are. That's something that I've been saying a lot of, and I think it's really important as a builder in the space. If you're unable to meet your users, whoever your users are, where they are, they're not going to be able to use your application. Even if they're your target user segment, they're going to show up and they're going to see Connect Wallet, and they're going to say, whoa, Connect My Wallet? What does that mean, right? Even, even if they're interested in using the application, right? So like, is it? Is the future of Web3 music just recreating the things that we have already seen? Is the future of Web3 music something that we're not even considering yet? What, what are your thoughts? I think that provide, like similar from a, a UI perspective, um, I think that's a great thing to reference for things that we've already seen. I mean, the tooling and you know, artist connection and stuff like that is definitely new and something that's you know great about web3 but i think that what we can learn from 
is just eliminating those barriers. So looking at the whole process from A to Z and seeing that, okay, what may be unfamiliar to people? What might set off those red flags of like, ah, oh, this is too much for me. I need to, I don't understand any of this. And you're taking a step-by-step -step approach to really sort of smooth out any of those and, and identify, um, yeah, and just, you know, from the bottom up, just sort of limit the, the amount of time people spend wondering about where they are and, and allow them to get from A to Z as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. And I think, I think Josh, you probably have some like unique insights here, right? You are, the, you are the epitome of the individual creator, right? You are the artist who is directly connecting with their super fans, mm -hmm. right? How, how has this impacted you? What do you feel that you want out of the future? Because as far as I'm concerned, you are the target audience, right? You are the audience that's going to be using these Web3 platforms, being the early adopter on these Web3 platforms to connect with those 100 super fans, right? What are some things that you feel we need? How's your experience been? Well, my experience has been just life-changing because um, when I started learning about NFTs, we were in the midst of the pandemic and my sole income, which was touring, was not available anymore. And, um, and I was just embraced with open arms by a wonderful, just wonder, wonderful family of people all over the world, which I, I never experienced on a digital scale before. And, and so basically I was just busking in Twitter spaces uh, through, throughout the night on American time. So I'm going to bed at like 7, 8 a.m. Uh, Berlin time, Super cool. but I did it because I was excited and I felt like I belonged somewhere and I felt like my music was uh, cherished, which I didn't really experience so much with the music industry. And what's really special for me is like, I don't need to wait on a gatekeeper to uh, find investment now to, uh, to grow and, and to keep uh, developing as an artist. I can get that directly from my fans now. It cuts out the middlemen. And thanks to that, I was able to tour with some of my favorite bands that I grew up with as a, as a kid, um, listening to such as Snow Patrol, Robbie Williams, and Bright Eyes. That would not have been possible without music NFTs because what people don't understand is that often touring with these kind of acts is actually an investment. And um, I might have played to 100,000 people, but like I wasn't paid for that show. And it was actually a big investment on my part. And what's really special is I'm bringing my family along for the ride in the very unique way that you can't really experience with an artist before. And I'm also building a uh, music NFT podcast and I'm hiring my community members, my most loyal and um, present community members because they might not have the experience, but I know that they are in it for the right reasons. And they, uh, they might lack the experience, but they make up for it in tenacity. And it's like really special that I can do that with, with my fans. So I'm like, getting a bit emotional about it, but yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. One, of the, one, of the, one of the things that I think is really great about Web3, and this is something that you just highlighted, right, that if we're able to cut out the middlemen mm. from the business, that provides more funding for you, the artist, to produce the things you want to do. Yeah. And now you can bring those extra people with you. Now you can run those, that extra show that you couldn't do because budget right. no longer allowed, right? You can stretch the creation longer connecting with those fans. Yeah. Um, Renil, I'm, qu I'm curious, right? Like you, you're, you're running the distribution, you're crushing distribution, right? Artists are out here producing. I was using Audius last night. I was like finding new artists to listen to. I was like really, really digging it, right? Um, you were at the forefront of the creator community and monetization for the creators, right? What are some things that, that you're excited about for the future of like the monetization aspect of the creator community? Yeah, uh, uh, so I uh, appreciate the kind words first off, but, um, but yeah, we, uh, I think what we're most excited about is kind of building on this idea of uh, disintermediation, right? That for the first time, the artist and, and fan can have this direct connection. Um, if you think about what a mediated market means, it means structure and to some extent less efficiency, right? If there are these intermediaries that control access, control the way that pricing works, monetization works, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of these, um, you know, a handful of highly opinionated models that you can choose from as an artist. It's either put your music into the black box of royalty collection and distribution that a major DSP provides, um, or, uh, uh, you know, there are some alternatives that give you a little bit more granularity. I think the 
the promise that uh, these crypto native monetization mechanisms brings to the table is a truly free market in music and, and even beyond that, like engagement with artists and, and uh, uh, all of the ancillary functions that exist around that. And historically at least, right, um, free markets are messier, but they're more efficient in that uh, uh, more you know, things can be priced more accurately. And as a creator, having that control of pricing. So, um, you know, we, we see creators on, uh, uh, in the audience ecosystem do some, uh, some crazy things. Like uh, there's a, a producer that's um, uh, gonna be running a remix competition in a few weeks that wants to, uh, to price um, access to the uh, track to be remixed and the stems at $100, right? So he's like, you, you know, I want uh, uh, to give this away to my community, but anyone who, uh, you know, wants to enter the remix competition and, and get those constituent pieces to do so has to pay $100. Honestly, I have no idea if that's the right price or the wrong price. Maybe it's too high. Maybe he could charge $1,000 and people would still do it. But the point is, like, it's not my decision to make, and it should not be my decision to make. Um, and when an uh, open market can exist, um, artists are going to see each other experimenting with these things, and norms will start to emerge over time around how you should be thinking about pricing things and how things can work. But, um, but uh, I think the net result of that will be um, uh, uh, more revenue earned, right? Like I, I'd be curious, you know, jo uh, uh, Josh, to hear from you if you feel like the uh, you know, all-you-can-eat streaming model is uh, the best way to value your music or engagement with your fans, right? And like, I think if you talk to most artists, they say no. Um, but uh, uh, it's, it's a difficult question, right, to say, well, then what does properly value it? I don't think any of us know, because there's never been like, an open market to discover these things. If I can add, I would say the biggest challenge we have is that music is taken for granted right now and is seen as worthless, when in, in, in fact, it's actually priceless. Like, the impact music makes on our lives is um, incredible. And like, for example, m I imagine watching a horror film and there's no music, like, that's boring as fuck. So, and that's also the impact it uh, makes on our emotions and, and we should not take that for granted. But of course, if it's not priced reasonably, then artists like myself cannot survive. And the Spotify model, I think, is interesting. I think it did great things in the beginning to fix piracy. Um, I wonder if it's becoming outdated now and if there's a better way, and that's why I'm so excited about uh, this music revolution happening now on, on Web3. Yeah, I think, um, I think there's, there's a shift happening, and um, I want to get into a little bit of um, kind of your thoughts, generally speaking, on the tech, right? From the NFT and the sales of the art standpoint, um, as a consumer, I find it a little difficult to uh, buy music art. Just personally speaking, I'm used to these streaming models. I'm used to Spotify. The idea of maybe spending $100 for an NFT for, for an artist um, doesn't appeal to me, but I do like the concept of artists being able to monetize. And I do like the concept of supporting the artists, right? Mm -hmm. And I think part of that, at least for me in my mind, is a little bit of the, the scarcity model with other chains and other technologies that existed when you have to maybe spend $30, $40 to mint an NFT, right? You're going to need to get recoup that investment for you as an artist, right? So you're going to list for 50, 60, 70. Um, with the technology that I now have on Solana, right? With uh, compressed NFT is bringing the cost down to you know a hundred dollars to to produce a tree and send out sixteen thousand NFTs right with this cost becoming so low what are some what are some interesting models because I now we're now shifting I think a little bit or can shift from the artist using these things to sell and monetize their work and keep going now we can kind of shift a little bit now we can possibly do bigger things bigger things at scale um, Matt I know you guys are thinking about this a little bit yep. what are your thoughts on um, the uh, technology that we now have right at the tips of our fingers and how that's kind of um, going to shape what we're building in the future for Web3 Music. Yeah, I mean, things like compressed NFTs are great for parts of music that are distributed in mass. So, you know, what we've been looking at at Boombox has been things like samples and instrumentals, things that are typically sold in packs um, that I think can really benefit from things like compressed NFT technology. Um, and to touch on what you were saying before, just about, I think there's a big part of it that 
you know, streaming and unit sales can be very complementary experiences. I think it's important that you understand what audience you're in front of. You know, the streaming audience tends to be more kind of quick fix, you know, fast consumption. Um, but finding a way to hone that down to, you know, what a, a lot of people have mentioned up here and honing down on those 100 fans, but also showcasing that these can happen in, you know, the traditional methods of marketing. I know that the link in bio is a huge thing. A lot of people love to have their, their link trees or, or whatever it may be. And I think that, you know, maybe subbing out that link for a unit sales link or, you know, showcasing the just finding ways using, you know, NFT tooling and stuff like that to really identify that core fan base. Um, and then, you know, depending on what that artist experience is, and I think it can change, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is artist to traditional music fan. Uh, it could be artist to music producer who requires, you know, either, or even if it's an artist who needs an instrumental or a pack of samples or, or something like that. And I think that, yeah, we're really going to see with new tech that rolls out, new ways that music can be used on chain, and really excited just to see the future unfold. There's a couple of things we're working on at Boombox that we're pretty excited about in, in that lane, so yeah, it's yeah. super cool. Uh, you know, like you, you said packs, right? You just said we're gonna do packs, and I'm like, whoa, this is a little bit of the gamification of just the traditional like picture NFT, right? You, you open your pack of cards, you know, your booster pack, and you get cool things, and you say that, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, right? I would. I would buy a pack of, of music NFTs that would support a group of artists where you kind of don't know what you're going to get. The gamification, the surprise sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Could right? also be uh, albums as well. Yeah. You know, distributing a whole, I, I, as far as I know, you know, being able to make one purchase and then have access to a list of songs is, is something that could be used as well with, you know, packs and stuff like that. So yeah, that's I exactly like that. what I did actually with my Love Letters collection where I had eight songs, but three different arrangements of each song, and I handmade 888 letters, which featured the lyrics of it. And for me, that was such a more meaningful way of, of telling my story behind the album that you just don't get from an MP3 on a playlist on Spotify. Yeah, I think I think there's going to be. I think as we as we build more and the technology increases, at least the user experience increases, we'll have a little more of these interesting models. And it feels like it leads a little bit into like more licensing, mm -hmm. right, and ownership verification than it does like actually owning these musics and and having them that way. Uh, Renee, um, on the topic of Web three tech, right, and and the things that are emerging on in our ecosystem, what are you thinking about uh, in the future? What are some of the cool pieces of technology that you think are going to unlock? some fun things for the space. Yeah, so uh, uh, you know, I, I think one of our biggest constraints at, um, at Audius has been the kind of um, the, the sort of this, I, I guess like this goal of, of really trying to be able to serve uh, uh, every user who, you know, regardless of their level of existing crypto experience and and whatever else um, and that's allowed uh, Audius to grow to a pretty you know reasonably significant scale today it serves about five million odd uh, fans every month uh, over two hundred thousand artists have, have shared content here but um, as a result of that uh, uh, scale as well there's uh, uh, kind of it's it's much more difficult to uh, uh, to um, experiment with things around NFTs for for example in the world where they cost uh, you know a significant amount to mint and significant amount to engage with um, it's one of the reasons we uh, a few years ago ended up in uh, the Solana community was because uh, uh, the audience community kind of had no choice there was nowhere else uh, uh, that could. Um, that could handle uh, uh, the scale that that this ecosystem is operating at, um, and uh, it's been really amazing to see, you know, this week and over the past few months. Uh, but you know, especially this week, getting to see all the folks building around these things, right? Um, the uh, uh, standards around compression, I, I think, in my view, are, are really a key unlock because. Uh, it, it allows for um, you know uh, 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 um, abstraction patterns that like we've been using for example uh, over the, over the past few years to now be interoperable um, but on top of that like specifically around compressed nfts right being able to um, you know, effectively have the ability to mint infinite numbers of, of NFTs at fixed cost, right? Like that is really, really cool. Um, that's not something that's uh, uh, ever 
um, ever existed in a way that actually interoperated and, and you know, was, was workable with wallets and, and everything else in any ecosystem, right? So we are super excited for those models. Um, you know, maybe, maybe some things coming in the future uh, in the Audius community that, that might be utilizing that. So keep an eye out there. But um, yeah, really excited to, uh, to see all the amazing stuff that people can build and can actually service this much, much larger uh, audience as a result. The more, um, the more uh, uh, casual music fan who might not know or even care that there's any crypto here, right? Uh, they just want a new way to engage with an artist uh, and a, a way to support them and a way to get a different experience. Yeah, yeah. If you guys didn't catch that, there's some alpha, right? Pay attention. They're going to be dropping some new things in the future. Tune into their Twitter for paying attention, right? Um, and I think what's going to be really cool as, as we as we you know talk about this technology, you know, we're going to have a, a hopefully a data rich chain in the future, right? Where artists, um, musicians, creators, producers, consumers are all going to be able to just see what's going on and connect directly to their artists that they care about, right? You're going to be able to identify those 100 super fans that are going to support you and be around you and um, help you get to the, the places you want to be. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about, about having the 100 super fans? Is that something that's like truly a viable situation? How do we get there for these artists? Yeah, I think it's important to showcase the possibilities and you know, you could do it through just doing equivalents to say, you know, this many sales to 100 fans is the equivalent of this many streams. Might be a way to draw the connection in people's brains. I think it's also super important for artists to communicate if they have, you know, whether it's the, and you know, it sounds like Josh has been super successful with it and been really good at communicating the process behind it or what's on the other side of the purchase and really informing people that, you know, this is an ac this is access to have a closer relationship with someone like Josh and to like to s communicate that I think is super important rather than just being like, hey, go buy my song. I think, you know, communicating the process or whatever it is the artist is deciding to offer on the other end of it or enrich the experience with um, is super important to highlight. And I think that will sort of draw out the super fans um, through showcasing and communicating that experience. And I think that obviously, you know, certain barriers like the wording around you know, public perception of the word NFT or whatever it may be, um, but still communicating that in avenues that are you know, other forms of social media, like on Instagram and TikTok and making videos that are sort of surrounded by the unit sale mm -hmm. um, and amplifying that and, and sort of, yeah, there's, because there is a ton of potential and the impact of unit sales is still very real, um, especially when boiled down to that, you know, 100, uh, 100 fans. And I think it's, yeah, it's a great thing for artists and I think could be very motivating for a ton of artists to see that, hey, like, I don't necessarily need to do a million streams twice a month to sustain a lifestyle doing this. And you can have fans that are enriched in the experience as well at the same time as, you know, as Josh mentioned, have investment to further your career and, you know, offer uh, and just improve your music all around. Yeah, Josh, you're nodding your head here. You're nodding your head here, right? 100%. So, yeah, how do you feel about, about being the artist, right? You are now collecting those super fans. You are now surrounding yourself with super fans. And you have, you have effectively, in many cases, cut out multiple middlemen, right? Um, how has that been for you? What's, what's your life like now with this situation? Well, it's amazing that it takes me all over the world, but I feel more than anything, like it's amazing to see my fans actually making big wins out of it as well. Like I had a collector in Australia called Angie who bought my love letter for $100 and then happened to mint one of the one of ones and then resold that for four and a half grand. And that's for music, which is, uh, I don't, uh, that's probably like a million and a half yeah, Spotify yeah. streams or something, the same value. And it's like, it's not just me winning, but my community are winning. And uh, music is becoming finer. I mean, it already is. It's just, we got to communicate that and educate people why there's value behind it all. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Like, kudos, kudos to the collector, right, who, who was able to hopefully change their, their life just a little bit mm -hmm. by getting involved in Web3. Um, Renil, as, uh, as we approach our time, do you have any thoughts on, on you, you are the distribution network, you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artists on your platform. Like, what are your thoughts about trying to identify the super fans and getting them connected with the artists that they care about? 
Yeah, so I, I think um, uh, that's the, that question is exactly the uh, uh, the biggest challenge we often see is uh, uh, for an artist who has a fan base uh, uh, in some form established already. Like, how do you find those super fans? How do you reach them? How do you understand what they want? And uh, uh, we uh, we try and work really hard around uh, uh, tools in that vein. I think Audius kind of came at uh, the problem, honestly, from, from the opposite direction, which was start by building, uh, creating tools to help folks build a, a fan base at the top of funnel, and then now uh, uh, working towards better identifying those folks who are engaging with you the most and doing the most interesting things, and then giving you as the creator the opportunity to, um, uh, to hyper-serve them. And uh, yeah, to your, to your question about, um, kind of, you know, what, uh, uh, how many super fans should it take, right? Like, I, I think to what Josh said, it doesn't, could be just one, right? It's not, it's not like, there's not some magic number, right? Um, and I, I think that's uh, uh, the coolest thing here is there's there's historical precedent for that, like, you know, way, way back in, in the day, these patronage models and, and whatnot. But when you look at, like, in a digital realm, uh, uh, there's not really been an analog for, for that that's been able to exist. Um, but what digital does do for, for us is uh, uh, gives every every creator the chance to reach anyone in the world and to source from from that rather than, you know, I don't know, like in the 1500s, your king that was down the street that you had to, to you know, uh, um, kind of, uh, uh, you know, debase yourself to to, yeah. to be able to uh, uh, get support. So um, so I think that's, that's really exciting. And, uh, you know, folks like you, Josh, are pioneering that. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun to see where, uh, uh, where those, uh, uh, those like yourself at the bleeding edge really take things. That's a, I really like that. I really like that statement. It only takes one, guys. If you are an artist, if you are a creator, all it takes is one super fan to, to change your life. Web3 allows us to connect with those super fans. I want to take this moment to, uh, to thank our panelists for being on stage today. Thank you all in the audience for being here and listening to us talk about the future of Web3 music. Please don't forget to check out these wonderful, wonderful people here on stage. Check out Boombox Market. Check out Audius. Check out Josh's music. Don't miss it. Uh, and thank you all for the time today. Yeah.